Why struggle through a post-merger integration when you can glide through it? Why deal with the PMI integration challenges when you can overcome them even before they occur? Why move slow when you can move at pace? What are the world's leading PMI experts doing right now to achieve profit accelerating integrations? This podcast will give you all the answers to these questions and many more. My name is Dudley Peacock and welcome to the 100 Days and Beyond podcast. Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of uh, our marketing leadership um, uh, podcast where we talk to marketing specialists. uh, We've got a really good guy today, uh, someone who has spent the bulk of his his career, especially in marketing around social media. Um, And as you know, in this in this podcast, we talk to those, I would say, not just the everyday marketing people, but the leaders that do more, that spend more time and and really get to know their craft, their art, if you like. Um, and go through all the various stages uh, as, you know, in the old days we had apprenticeships. I think uh, if I look at Tony, um, wow, I think he's done his apprenticeship in social media <laughs> and I think he's got tons of things to share that are going to be valuable to 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 any marketing leaders or any budding or aspiring leaders in, in marketing out there. So in terms of marketing leadership, this is what we're talking about today is about being a true marketing leader, being a leader that does more than, than what is required, but also gets to really understand what's what what goes in almost in the engineering side of things of marketing. Marketing is an art and a skill, and it depends on which side of the fence you sit. But I think, I think uh, Tony has pretty much got it spot on in terms of social media marketing it's one of those mythical areas that people do struggle and i think we got the right guy on, on board for today so welcome tony let me just get you onto the picture welcome tony uh good to see you today and um i'm glad you got your socialhire.com um, website there so people can get get hold of you welcome thank, thank you great to be here so, so if I look at your your um, your LinkedIn profile, uh, uh, Tony, I, I think I'm going to just read a few uh, key elements out of this, and and then we're going to just go dig straight into it and and have a look at um, I think the journey that you've taken because for me it's 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 fascinating in in terms of where social media has begun. I mean, social media is commonly known. Everyone's like, you know, what what what's the posting and and I mean the the, the in the 90s i think you know if you took photographs you still had to get them developed i think in those days. and this digital photography but you needed very expensive cameras these days everyone has things on their phones so they're taking snapshots of their meals their dogs their cats and everything i think that's social media yes to a great extent it is but if you take it from a marketing point of view i think it becomes uh, completely different so if i look at your if i look at your uh, your linkedin profile you talk about Social media marketing is like a Rubik's cube, <laughs> and wow, I mean that's that's probably probably the best way I've uh, I've seen of explaining it. I'll help your business solve it, and I mean I love that because you can actually, if you know the sequence to solve a Rubik's cube, you can do that. Small business marketing and lead generation, recruitment marketing, which I think is critical these days, because companies don't think of of employing the marketing department or marketing leaders within the organization to also be looking at at bringing in the right talent and then in terms of social selling i think that's that's absolutely spot on so um you've got i mean you talk about want to start generating leads and uh, or candidates by leveraging social media marketing you talk about um that you can the people can book a call but but I think what what I like here is where you say getting results from social media marketing is like trying to solve the Rubik's cube, isn't it? Infuriating for most, <laughs> but more straightforward for those who have put in the hours to master every element of what's needed to succeed. So, so welcome, Tony. I'm glad that that you're on board. And and I think just uh, I mean our conversation leading into the into the podcast and into this episode, um, what fascinated me most probably was your was your journey because you started many many years ago when when this was a relatively unexplored um new world um and i maybe if you want to just take us through that 
sort of what your experiences were, how you got into this fascinating world and where you are today and what you're busy doing at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and thanks for having me. And I'm delighted you picked up on the uh, the Rubik's Cube analogy. Uh, I must confess, I can't do a Rubik's Cube. Uh, you never figured that out, never took the time to uh, figure out how to do it. But when I was getting into social media, I remembered those frustrations as a kid of, you know, of, of spending hours trying to make, you know, trying to finish it. And then, you know, seeing these Guinness World Record things where people had done it in, you know, X minutes or even, you know, X seconds uh, as it subsequently became. So, um, <laughs> hence the analogy. Um, I but. <laughs> Uh, what I what I would do actually is just take you back very briefly to uh, what I did in my summers at university because I did door to door cold selling uh, in the United States, and for anyone who's ever done any cold calling, um, you know you you learn very quickly it is uh, well firstly it can be highly dejecting if you're someone who doesn't take. Uh, you know, being rejected well, then it's not something you're going to thrive at. Um, you know, I, I would have to knock on dozens and dozens and dozens of doors every single day. Uh, most people not be interested in what I had, uh, you know, to offer. Uh, and then I'd have to actually talk through with 30 people in a day uh, how, you know, how we could help them. Uh, in order to make the number of sales that actually meant, you know, I, I was earning a living. Um, now, I only bring that up because when I then went into business uh, and subsequently became very involved in digital marketing, what I really wanted to help people with was not having to go through that in order to make sales. So obviously, you know, there are businesses out there that thrive just from picking up the phone or sending emails to people who, you know, never express an interest and and just, you know, doing enough of that till you find someone that needs your services. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that actually is a big obstacle for a lot of business owners, because if you don't, if you're not comfortable with that kind of approach, um, particularly in your early days, uh, you know, that, then where are your customers going to come from? Um, and so my approach with social media has really been, you know, from day one, I want to figure out how uh, you use social media to actually get a stream of people uh, that want or have an interest in doing business with your company because they have a need for what it is you do uh, and that they've come to you wanting a call uh, or, or wanting to, to spend some time with you rather than you having to you know, be constantly cold calling and cold approaching people. Um, so I hope that helps sort of by way that of helps, it helps a lot because I, I think I think most people that have been involved in in the hardcore cold selling and, and I think if you go back a number of years that there were very few avenues to reach your target audience. I mean, you could pick up the phone, you could send them a letter, um, you could knock on the door, <laughs> um, you could attend maybe an event or two, but social selling. Um, often was more sort of, let's say, uh, it was more for the higher end guys that could afford sort of golf and, and going to the local tennis club or whatever it is, or, or attend some, some kind of networking event. But not everybody could get involved in, in that sort of social space, if you like. And social me meant something completely different. It probably meant a whole lot of <laughs> alcohol and other, other beverages as well. But but as things moved um, uh, and, and, and platforms developed in the back end of, of the 90s and early, early 2000s, we had, I think, YouTube and um, Facebook and all that only really started picking up in 2006, if you like. And we, it's, it's, if you think that's, what's that, 16 years, uh, 15, 16 years, and it feels like it's been around forever. You know, and and I think Ruby's Cube's probably been around about longer than that. <laughs> but um, if if I just ask you then, so so what are the key things? If if you look at social selling, what are the key principles? Because when I look at social selling and 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 even social engagement with people, I mean, we're talking here about a lot about so, uh, behavioral psychology to a certain extent. It's it's you can't offer somebody something before they at least have a nice warm fuzzy about you. You know, you can't ask for, uh, you know, marriage 
or a wedding proposal before you you've done a bit of a bit of homework in in up front you know you can't actually just go out and do certain things there is a sequence there is there is a relationship building sequence if you like and i'm sure social selling has got that sort of thing and on these different platforms they also have different audiences i mean mm. so maybe there are dif different things that you've discovered that you could pick out and just sort of share some of the core principles that you've learned almost sometimes probably the hard way, but probably learned over the last sort of 10 odd years, 10, 12 years, I think that you've been in it. Yeah, happy to do that. I mean, I would start by saying, I think there are really two, you know, broad approaches that work well when it comes to using social media to, you know, to generate business inquiries and interest candidate hires, event attendees, whatever it is you're, you're striving for as a business. Um, and a lot of people get fixated with the first, whereas actually the second is much more attainable uh, and much more easily tracked um, uh, and achieved. So the, the first approach, which is the one that we get hoodwinked into thinking is the one that is, you know, is the most attainable, is building up a huge presence for yourself on social media. Uh, such that you get seen by so many of your ideal clients uh, and, and get seen so repeatedly that you start getting, you know, a regular flurry of interest and inquiries just from, you know, the actions of you having posted on whichever channel you're on. Um, and we all get hoodwinked into thinking that that's the easiest way of getting results on social media because, that tends to be what we see when we go on social media, because when you, you know, whether you open up Facebook or, or LinkedIn or whatever else, uh, you know, what you're most likely to see in your homepage feed is actually the posts that are doing super, super well. Uh, and so you look at that and you think, oh, you know, if my posts do as well as that, then, uh, you know, then I'll start getting a huge flurry of interest for my business. But What's hidden from view is the fact that for every person there is in your LinkedIn homepage feed who's getting, you know, hundreds of engagements and likes and comments, uh, you know, there's there's several hundred people on LinkedIn who aren't getting that kind of visibility and engagement. So that is certainly one way of getting results on social media. Um, but it is, uh, I would say, the harder way uh, and the way that is more likely to end in frustration and, and you not having got the results you want. Um, but the easier way to get results on social media is, is, you know, to concentrate on a pool of people that you want to, you know, nurture relationships with uh, and, you know, we used to say in, in selling, people buy from people they know, like, and trust. Well, if you take the kinds of businesses we typically work with, so we, we work with professional services firms and technology companies. So, you know, a consulting firm, a recruitment agency, a training company, something like that. And if you think about those businesses, you know, they typically only need to make a small number of sales to other, you know, corporates during the course of the year, and that is their business thriving and, and growing, you know, very nicely. Mm. Um, and so how many of the right decision makers do you need to be striking up relationships with each quarter in order to, you know, get enough meetings that that turns into business for you? And actually, the answer is, you know, is relatively modest. You know, if you're a consulting firm and, I don't know, you focused on the pharmaceutical market, well, if you take the top 100 pharmaceutical companies out there and you look at who all the key executives are in those businesses, you know, if, if you get just a few hundred of them uh, that you are regularly interacting with and able to have private conversations with through through social media, you know, that's going to turn into a very powerful source of leads for you. So um, so those are the two routes that I've seen work. I think anything else uh, is likely to disappoint in terms of bringing results. What I love about both of those approaches, but especially the second of those approaches, is it's really a numbers game. And it's figuring out what works and then doing more of what works, tweaking and refining to improve on that. Uh, and then you get pretty you know, known outcomes. 
And this goes right back to, you know, the door to door selling days. You know, I knew I needed to knock on this many doors and have this many meaningful conversations with people each day in order to make the number of sales I need to make. And social media is no different. You know, you need to start conversations with this many of your ideal prospects during a quarter in order to have got the number of meetings and, and ultimately the amount of sales that, that you want to get. Does that, does that help? Does that all make sense? I, I, I love that. And, and, and immediately what, what, what came to mind, and I'm probably going to get into trouble for this, but what, what, I, what, I, um, what I noticed and, and, I'm, I, and you know, one, of the, one of the areas of business that I'm, I'm involved in is, is the, um, so the ERP or business management software space. And, and that generally you don't need, especially in the mid and upper markets, you don't need 10,000 customers per month. You know, you, you, if you're signing up one or two, three deals a, a, a month as an agency or a reseller or something, you're doing relatively well. You need, if you bring on 50 odd clients a year, you're doing very, very well. So, so you don't need 10,000 clients. So, and, and, and it, I mean, it's almost like a parody in a way, but it's, I, I, I looked at one of the software companies, it's, it's quite well known. Uh, a company called Oracle NetSuite. You, you may or may not have heard mm. of it. And I watched this whole thing unfold. So what was clear to me is that during uh, a period, I mean, I think Oracle bought um, bought NetSuite. I think NetSuite started in 98. Oracle bought uh, NetSuite in 2008, I think it was. And then did the normal channel sales, you know, building relationships with people to get their distribution there. And then I think the pandemic hit, right? So, so what happened was they started this campaign. And I don't know if you, if you saw it all over the place, but they started flooding the market with um, endless amounts of social media posts. You know, you go into any kind of platform and there you see another Oracle NetSuite, um, you know, some kind of article, some kind of this, some kind of that. And they, I mean, they were, they were, they were drowning the audience in that um and they had rolled out uh, and and i mean maybe i'm talking about inside inv uh, information here but but they rolled out multiple direct channel sales because they thought they're not going to use the the normal relationship sales so that you know most erp businesses have a channel so they build a, a good relationship with their channel who has good relationships with the clients and that they sell and they would implement and support the client client base and they will have multiple channels. So uh, an ERP vendor basically sells to its channel, supports mm -hmm. its channel, um, it trains its channel, and provides sort of marketing and other support to its channel. Oracle uh, decided for NetSuite to go direct. So they had built this whole infrastructure worldwide to go to sell direct to clients because they thought, you know what, we'll just package a product that can just sort of be plug and play. And and what they what they didn't realize is there's there's still something called product market fit, and there's still something called <laughs> relationship sale. And I just saw this proliferation of social media uh, posts going up, and all of a sudden um, they started closing those direct sales offices. They've reverted back to their old model. They've closed down direct sales completely, from what I've seen. Um, and and they've gone back to the old channel model, and and they're now starting to 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 rethink the way that they go to market. And that's just an example of um, of this. Uh, and, I, and it could very well have been sort of let's call it a young youngish team of social sellers saying, you know what, we have to just sort of blast the universe with with stuff, and let's see what happens. You know, and I still see every now and then a post of like how to start and grow a business, you know, download a free guide now. And I'm like, what does a software vendor know about starting and growing a business? Tell me about, rather give me the message that's a fit, if I'm a buyer of software and ERP, rather give me a message that's a fit. If you want me to download or to opt into um, a, an offer of some sort, don't give me something that's totally unrelated. You know, you're trying to be something that you're not. Mm. And it comes back to exactly what you were saying. So it says, build, rather build good relationships with fewer people. And some people even call it sort of the dream 100 or dream 500 or dream whatever list. 
as in, let me first understand who I want to approach, what those people are, what is the, what is the offer and, and what is the, you know, what can I do to add values? Because business is about a, a, an exchange of value, isn't it? Mm. It is about saying, I've got something you need. I've got something that I, I know that, 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 that you want, but I know clearly who, what your challenges and problems are as, as a buyer and I can help you through your journey of achieving what you want to do in terms of your success. And I want to just throw it out to you. I mean, you must have seen quite a few of these examples, and, and I'm probably going to get into trouble for this, but you've probably seen a number of these examples where, where companies have gone out and thought, okay, this is it. We're just going to go and flood the market. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, shoot, we've just spent, I don't know, X amount of thousands or millions i don't know what what netsuite spent but um with very little uh, to show for it and i and and i think that's a really good example of what some people and, and especially people i speak to their experience of social selling so when you try and i think when you try and tell people look actually it does work and they say no tony there's no ways there's no ways it works because we've done this this and this and then what you've said there in terms of saying, okay, these are the two sort of approaches. It's either the sort of mass posting and visibility, hoping someone's going to come and talk to you, or is it more about targeting? And, and, and I, I just wanted to sort of use that as sort of a platform for the continuing conversation. So tell me what you think about my story and then sort of pull a few analogies out of that if you can. Mm. Do you know, something I have learn over the years whenever i see uh, advice on how to get great results with any kind of digital marketing uh i'm all i always have my radar on for what is it about this person's uh existing situation that means that they can get these kind of results but that would mean other people trying to follow in getting their results uh you know are going to struggle and very often when you see, you know, these courses and the like about how to get amazing SEO results, how to get your website on a page on a Google, how to, you know, grow an email list at an amazing rate of clicks and how to get huge numbers of affiliate partners and whatever. When you actually look at people giving that kind of advice, you very often see, but hang on a minute. There's something about your business in terms of how old it is, how established your website is, how many backlinks you've already got, what size of email database you already have in your business. That means if a total you know, new business tries to do what you're recommending, there are key things about what you're recommending that are gonna mean that they, they fall through and it doesn't work for them. And, and I say that because you always have to start from the point of view is of what is the starting point of this business now in the in the case you mentioned there you know huge businesses with huge brands uh very often with social media followings of you know hundreds of thousands if not millions of people following them on social media clearly they're able to do things and achieve results that you know uh, a regular small business can't replicate because they don't have either that brand awareness uh, or indeed the huge scale of following that those businesses already have. But more importantly, uh, and this is really relevant for small businesses, um, when you go down the route of paying to advertise to get messages out on social media, then that becomes a very deep pocket game. Uh, and so, you know, I don't know the particular uh, campaign you're talking about or, or how successful it was, uh, but any large company that's going down the route of getting results through social media adverts, rather than having a team of salespeople getting results through, through social selling, they will have sunk vast sums of money into making that work for them. And let me just give you a, uh, you know, a few quick examples. So, you know, if, if you want to advertise on social media, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or wherever, let's think about all the things you've got to get right. You know, you've got to get your audience right. So on those social platforms, you're going to have to create different audiences and you're going to have to put budget behind testing each of those audiences to find out which audience is most responsive to whatever you know message you're putting out there in the market. 
then you're going to have to test the imagery or the video you're using in that that advert because you know run 10 different images or 10 different videos and you know one of them is going to perform several times better than another then your call to action in that post or that advert you've got to test that as well and then you need to test actual completely different outcomes. So maybe you've got one campaign running that is you know, trying to get people to book in for a demo. You've got another campaign running that's trying to get people to, I don't know, sign up for a webinar or come along to an open day you're hosting, something like that, to test all of those different variables mm. and, and therefore get to the point where you know, okay, this is the campaign that works the strongest for us. You know you need millions of, of marketing budget to be able to do that kind of testing uh, thoroughly. And if you can't do that kind of testing thoroughly, then you're much more into the realms of guesswork. You know, So a small business trying to replicate that, trying to set up ads to do well, needs to have a fairly sizable budget to get to the point where you know uh, that those ads work. So um, I, I sort of highlight that because some people watching this probably, you know, in smaller businesses may have tried out using social media ads and it's not produced anything for them. And so they assume, oh, you know, social media just doesn't work in, in our sector or with what we're trying to, to sell. Um, and the answer is, or the, the, the counter to that is you've you've gone down the advertising route without the size of budget that's needed to make that work. Um, and for a lot of small businesses, you know, it's a big leap to, have mm. to, to put in the kind of budget that's needed to make that work. And so getting all the results you can get from organic social media, so not paid social media, uh, is often, you know, far uh, a far more secure way of getting results. And that's what we, you know, largely focus on as a business is how do you get results on social media without, you know, needing to have huge advertising budgets to to achieve that um so i, I hope that helps uh I'm, I'm hoping it helps the audience and i think it does I, I think for me you're absolutely right it's 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 budget but i think it potentially goes and, and i mean this is part of our conversation we had before the podcast as well was was a lot it's, it's a lot more to do about have you truly identified who your ideal customer is number that's number one it shifts over time. I mean, that's probably a point number two. And if you look at a, a platform like LinkedIn, for instance, which is sort of the go-to B2B environment, if you like, or, or platform. If you go to LinkedIn, and 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 I mean, I've got close to 30,000. I think you got 30,000. Mm. 30,000 is the limit of people that you can be connected to in, in LinkedIn. So, so then it starts becoming limiting because it's not this endless sort of you can contact 7 billion people. It's not like that. You can you can contact whoever you got on your list. So if you're doing social media posting and your list of connections is not correct or it's not in your ideal market, I mean, you already, it's, 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 a, it's, it's just throwing stuff into the wind and hoping for the best. So so, so I think for, for LinkedIn, what people have to, to, to really get to grips with is you got to remember you got a limit of 30,000 and that is your marketing list. So if you think about marketing principles, the way we used to do it right in the early days is what's your list? Marketing starts with a list. Am I right? I mean, it's like, it's like who, 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 show me your list. And I mean, if you talk to any sales guy and you say, show me your list. It's like, yes, it's on the CRM. It's like, okay, well, let's look at the quality of that list. Who are you talking to? Are they, do they fit within the product target or product market fit uh, profile that you need to be talking to? Do you understand your market? Do you, do you understand the journey, the buying journey, not the selling journey, the buying journey of your market? And do you understand that the better your list the better the quality of your list and the better of the engagement of the people that you're trying to engage, the better your results are going to be because it's all about relationship. It's not about how many thousands or things you can post out there. And what was very interesting when I spoke to you was that you're doing the same as me. I mean, I'm disconnecting. I don't know if that's the right word, but deconnecting from people that are no longer in, in my target market that I connected to some years back. And that and things have shifted. They've moved on to different roles. They've moved on to different jobs. Some of them have retired. You know, there's been a shift. 
how clean is your list? And then, you know, then who are you talking to and how well are you talking to them? Are you talking to the right people? I don't know. Tell me a little bit more about your thinking around that. Yeah, I mean, everything that you do on, on any of the social sites gets amplified if people engage with it. And clearly, if all the people that see what you're putting out there have, you know, a real interest in it, then you as an individual or as a company are going to get more engagement and then more and therefore more share of the eyeballs. Um, so having that clean list is is really important. And yeah, you know, you reference uh, what I've been doing. So my previous business uh, was a management consultancy careers site, uh, global. So I had people all around the world from universities, business schools, experienced hires, you know, connecting with me because they knew me as the founder of Top Consultant was that business. Uh, and, you know, they wanted to get my insights on how to get a career in consulting. But fast forward to now, and that now means that I have loads of connections in countries where we just don't do business uh, and we don't ever stand to do business in those countries. So for me, you know, those are people who, who now aren't as interested in what I'm now doing uh, because they were interested in consulting careers, whereas now, you know, I'm helping consulting firms with their social media. So, you know, my ideal audience is founders, owners, directors of consulting firms, recruitment businesses, business coaches and the like. So um, freeing up space for people who are no longer, uh, you know, my ideal uh, type of client in order to make space for more of the people who are really going to benefit from what I share on, on the platform. Uh, you know, for me, that's that's a no brainer. Um, but also, it, it should be said, you know, there are loads of businesses out there where, you know, you're, you're actually not going to get anywhere close to needing the full 30,000 connections anyway. I mean, you know, if you take a lot of consulting businesses and they are focusing on one niche area, you know, we are a cybersecurity consultancy or we are a consultancy for the NHS in, in the UK or we are a, a consulting firm helping, I don't know, companies that sell into big retailers. You know, actually, the, the pool, when you go out there and you research the market and you look at, OK, who are the decision makers who would would buy from us? You know, it may be that there's only a couple of thousand that you really would have any interest in, in getting a meeting with, at which point, you know, you hone down and you focus your efforts on, uh, getting you know as many of those relationships started as possible. Yeah, I love that. And 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 and, and some uh, some time back, about uh, a year, year and a half ago, I started to look at what makes a uh, the size. Uh, what makes uh, the what's the size of a viable market? You know, because sometimes you have people that are shifting markets and they they're thinking, okay, well, you know, we now have a new product or service, or we're trying to rethink you know, the way that we go to market, et cetera, or we starting to use social selling as a tool as we didn't do that before. Um, my view is you need, as you said, about a, a couple of thousand is probably the minimum. And, and I think what makes a viable market is, is, is probably about three to 4,000 really good, solid, high quality contacts on your list. Not that you're going to talk to them all, but I think, as you mentioned earlier, it's, it is a numbers game. But but anything less than a couple of th any less than anything less than two thousand, I think, I think you're starting to become it, it starts becoming a little difficult to get enough sufficient conversations going, depending again on the business. But mm -hmm. but again, I mean, from a consulting in your in your space, if you like, from professional services and and so on, you need at least that you know, from, from my experience, I don't know, what's your, what's your view on sort of what makes a viable market size if, you know, from a list size point of view? Yeah, I, I think that's a good kind of number to be aiming for. I mean, if I think of, uh, you know, a small niche consulting firm, and let's say that historically, they have got most of their business from hosting a business breakfast or a networking event three or four times a year. And you know, to each of those events, they've wanted to get along 50 of their ideal customers. Well, okay, so four of those events a year, so 200 people we need to get along to uh, to one of these events. If you've got you know 2,000 fans, followers, connections of the right profile of people, 
who you can then reach out to and, and individually invite them along to an event like that, then basically you've got you know the, the, the size of uh, of social media network there that you need to be able to make a success of those kinds of, of events. So it's not a huge numbers game. You know, you don't need to be reaching hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, you know, if you're a niche B two B business, you just need to be reaching enough of the right decision makers and then to have figured out how you convert them because obviously it's one thing to have those 2000 people you know following your twitter account or connected to you on on linkedin but how do you then get those people from being a connection or a follower to you know you've actually had a zoom call with them or they've come and had a, a coffee meeting or they've attended your business breakfast and, and obviously that is a a key thing to get right as well um just on that so very early days of social hire, uh, we actually built the business through Twitter rather than LinkedIn initially. Um, and I found a platform uh, at the time called Cicado. It, it doesn't exist anymore, so don't bother going and looking it up. Um, but what it did was it allowed you to put in some parameters and say, okay, this is what my ideal prospect on Twitter would look like. You know, They would have the following kinds of keywords in their Twitter profile. And they would have tweeted about the following kinds of topics. Uh, and, and then each day it would show us a dashboard of here's people we think could be prospects for your business because they've got those keywords in their bio and they have tweeted one of your hot topics uh, you know, over the last 24 hours. And this uh, dashboard then allowed you to you know, then say, OK, that one's a, a potential prospect for me. And once they're a potential prospect, there would then be a sort of workflow uh, that that person, you would, you would like their tweet, uh, you would potentially add them to a Twitter list, uh, you would follow them. And each of those things would encourage, would result in that person getting a notification about you and therefore being prompted to take a look at your profile and potentially follow you back. Uh, and, and that would then produce a certain number of people choose to follow you back each, uh, you know, each day or each week. And then once they followed you back, you could then say, OK, I want to send them a, a direct message uh, after a certain period of time uh, to try and get a conversation started or to try and get something to happen. Now, I, uh, I've talked you through all this, Dudley, because it's really interesting for me. Um, in our earliest days, uh, we decided to test two things. So I wanted to offer uh, people who connected in that way uh, that they could have a free consultation call with us and we would just you know, get an understanding of their business and help them figure out whether social media could work for them. Um, so a one-on-one -on -one consultation, uh, really high value for them, not a not sales pitch, but, but just a consultation call. And then alongside that, we offered, uh, would you like to join a webinar where we're going to share ideas on, you know, here are some of the things we're seeing working on social media for, for small businesses like yours. Now, my instinct was that the phone call would outperform the webinar several fold. I thought the webinars, you know, generic advice, it's not tailored to your business. Uh, you're not getting one on one time with us. So it's much lower value. Uh, and so if I hadn't been someone who was inclined to test things, I would have just gone with, you know, the one on one call uh, and trying to get people booked in for one of those. And actually, when we, we ran that process and tested it all out, the webinar outperformed offering a, an individual call uh, several fold. So that's to say we got several times more leads generated from those activities on social media through going down the webinar route versus the one-on-one -on -one call route. Now, I must say this is back in sort of 2012, 2013 kind of time. So you can't necessarily take that and say, okay, that's what would work today because obviously all these things you have to be testing over time and seeing what's changed. Um, but that hopefully helps a lot of you watching to um, understand the real importance of testing things to see what works uh, because if you've just been doing one approach with you know, whatever it is you've been doing on social media and that hasn't been yielding great results for you it doesn't necessarily mean that social media doesn't work for your business it means you just haven't come up with the right approach yet 
that it's going to start producing, you know, repeatable, predictable results for you. Oh, so golden that, nugget. Yeah, it's brilliant. I love golden nuggets. So, so yeah, so, so there, there are quite a few takeaways already, um, you know, from in terms of, of list and, and so on. And, 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 and now this, um, I think the whole testing thing, I think marketers tend to, you, yeah, it's, I, I mean, years ago, it's not mine, but I, years ago, I heard the analogy is when you go fishing, you don't, you don't use the bait, you know, for a fish that you're going to eat. You know, sometimes that bait is pretty smelly. You know, it's like, there's no way that I'm going to eat that, but you cast, you know, you cast the, the, the bait into the, into wherever you're fishing and you tend to catch fish. So it doesn't have to look or smell good to you, <laughs> but as long as your, your audience um, appreciates um, that as a, as, as a message or a method, that's the one thing. And, and, I, and I think the testing of that is absolutely critical. So constantly testing. The market has shifted. So webinars sometimes in certain industries do well, others don't, and so on. But I think there's a principle in that. And I think the principle, besides the testing, is is what you did right at that particular point was an expertise first process or principle. So mm. why would someone engage with you if they don't know enough about you and they haven't got a good sort of know, like, and trust? I think that was one of your things you said earlier. And I think what webinars did initially in the early days, for me anyway, besides, and then they became incredibly, you know, you know, very dodgy in terms of, you know, that hard push sell at the end, you know, that, they had the script where, you know, they first tell their story. And they, I mean, I'm like so tired of those ones. And then right at the end is like, you know, this is, should be worth 200 million, but actually you can get it for $5 today or whatever it is. It's like, you know, how on earth did you even come up with those numbers? That You know, that all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think that testing is massively important. But I think if you run webinars or you run any kind of expertise first, you know, get that, that like uh trust you know that that th that um ability to show that you've, you you actually know what you're talking about and they get to get a sense of who you are as an individual that you're not just out there to take their money but you're not there to take what they want but you're there to add value to their lives and i think that additional step before they commit you know it's like do you commit to a first date or don't you you know if you're in the dating scene you know is you know, let me first find out from, let me have a look around. Is it, is that person the right kind of fit for me? You know, who their friends, you know, let me just look at the environment first. And before we start doing that sort of, you know, committing sort of a one-to-one -one chat. And I think what you did hundred percent right there was that sort of expertise first, that connection first, and then, and, and that's exactly right, but you tested it. And I think that was, that's the point you were trying to make is, is the testing. The interesting thing now is what works now compared to then, um, more so for you, because you, you're not only in sort of helping client, uh, helping your clients get more clients, but you're also into the hiring side of things as well. So tell us a little bit about sort of wh wh where, where are you finding sort of uh, the sort of sweet spots at the moment compared to, you know, from some years back? Um, I would, well, firstly, I would say for most, anyone that's not a massive, you know, brand, uh, focus on your individual team members, uh, to, to get your message out there and to build the audience, uh, rather than being fixated with the company account. And that, uh, that, that tends to be something that business owners can struggle with. Because obviously, you know, if if you encourage ten people in your business to grow a fantastic audience on social media that benefits your business, the problem with that is those ten people could leave, and then you know that that audience has gone with them, yeah. uh, and so that there, there is uh, often a you know reluctance to do that and a desire to instead grow the company's presence on social media. Uh, but the problem with that is that all the platforms heavily penalise company pages and so you know you or i with our thirty thousand connections on linkedin if we put something out on linkedin we will get this amount of visibility for that if a company with thirty thousand followers puts out the same post 
they will get only a tiny fraction of the visibility because LinkedIn wants companies to have to pay to sponsor their posts. Uh, so, so one of the thing, you know, whatever uh, your business is trying to achieve on social media, whether it's you know making hires or getting event attendees or generating demo requests or getting potential consulting clients along to a uh, you know a networking event, whatever it might be, I would uh, encourage you to build that around uh, the presence of your individual employees rather than getting overly fixated on the company. Um, and, and by the way, that doesn't mean that the company isn't taking center stage. You know, if you look at, for example, social hire, you know, all of our team put out posts with advice on how to get results through social media. But those posts are, you know, have posters with the social hire branding on or their videos with, you know, social hire in there. So. Uh, although it's the individual team members putting those posts out, you know, social hire is still very visible as a brand. Um, so, so I would highlight that. Um, what, what's worked, what hasn't worked, what's changed? I mean, to be honest, Dudley, it, it, it's so specific to countries, sectors, uh, the platforms you're using. Um, so almost anything I could say uh if people sort of then tried to run with that they could end up you know coming unstuck um so we see you know just to keep things at a simplistic level we see big differences between different sectors so certain sectors are much more active on some platforms than others uh job types depending on who you need to reach uh if you're trying to reach you know very high level decision makers then you're going to find them on certain platforms uh, if you're trying to reach, uh, you know, lower level employees where you need to hire huge numbers of those, they're going to be on other platforms. They're going to be reached different ways. Um, so, yeah, I mean, talk to someone, whatever you're trying to do in social media, who has worked in the kind of market that you serve so that the advice you're getting is based on, you know, real experience of that market. Uh, and you know, and then take that advice on board. That that would be what I would recommend. Um, in terms of, you know, broader trends, I mean, obviously you've got uh, the, the likes of TikTok just exploding and all that kind of video content uh, being, yeah, g getting huge airtime. Um, I must say for the kinds of B2B businesses that we work with, uh, that's much less of an impact because the kinds of people that are on TikTok watching that kind of content, you know, if you're a B2B trying to reach high level decision makers, uh, there's far fewer of them going to see your content on TikTok than if you do a great job on LinkedIn, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so you always have to uh, tailor where you're going to focus your effort on who it is you're trying to reach and what outcome you want to achieve. And, and one big piece of advice I would give there, Dudley, is it's much better to become an expert user of just one or two platforms than to feel like you're missing out by not being everywhere and then trying to be everywhere. You know, we as a business, we don't have Snapchat. We don't invest a lot of time in, in TikTok. Uh, we haven't done anything with Pinterest for years uh, because, you know, for us, we get far greater results from focusing our time on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Facebook. Um, but for other businesses, it'll be a different set of platforms that that make mm -hmm. most sense for them. I love that, and so I think Tony, what what you what you're saying there, and I, and I want to take sort of some of the golden nuggets out of that. And one of them for me is it is, is being a specialist on the platform, but it's also speaking to specialists. You know, um, you often, and I think you alluded to that in the beginning of our of our discussion, was you 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 know all you have to do is go into YouTube, and you have these quick these you know this guy standing next to his i don't know lamborghini and he's just made 500 billion yesterday on you know using social media posting and you know all that garbage that you see out there and it's like that person's recipe if it is true is not a plug and play it's not a sort of copy paste you you really do need to speak to those individuals like yourself and 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 this is why i, I thought it'd be very good to have you on 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 the podcast is people that know but know from a 
you know, from an experience level, but not just from that, but that that fully understand your market, your platform, the method to market, the the way that things are changing, and but but more so, it is about um, a guidance and a support by an expert, as opposed to trying to find these quick fixes. And and I think people tend to default to sort of, oh, that looks easy. I'm going to just sort of buy that package or get that little solution, plug and play, and it's just going to run and, and run by itself. I think on LinkedIn at, at one stage, I don't know where, where it is right now, but you could buy these flat, these soft, these pieces of software that would just automate connection requests and, and messaging and, and so on. Now, now uh, many people had bought those things thinking, you know what, I'm just, it's just going to be something can run in the background and I'm just going to, you, you know, just add a few messages and, and it's going to do the, what's the maximum hundred connections a day or whatever it is before I get blocked by, by one of the channels. Um, and I think LinkedIn was a proliferation of those things at one stage. And it was like message one, you know, uh, connect with me. Thank you for connecting. Message two is um, I see you haven't connected yet. You know, you must be busy. I thought I'd just remind you message three is like, this is, this is my my last message to you. Like, if you don't connect today, like this is it. And then, you know, or whatever, or it's a message like, here's my Calendly connection, you know, book an appointment with me. It's like, well, I don't even know who you are. And like, or the PDF is also another one. It's like, here's a PDF um, of, of our company profile, or whatever it is. Like, oh, come on. We don't even have a relationship yet. And I think going to guys like yourself and saying, sitting down and putting proper thought into it and i think what would really strike me about our conversation and and, and from and knowing your work on that tony is that that you're the kind of guy that will sit with somebody and and help them think through their specific situation and i think there's we need a lot more of that we need a lot more there's no copy paste this is a it's a unique and a very specialized skill talent platform etc that needs experts. It's not no longer something was never really been, but it's it's it should not be taken as a as a as a quick fix. There's no quick fix. This is a method. If you want to get good at let's call it some um, direct mail, then get good at that. You know, you know, write your letters and post your letters and all that. You know, if you're still doing the old school snail mail. Or if you're doing email marketing, get good at that. You know, know who your target market is, do the proper thing and do the proper approach, but bring the right people in if you don't have the skill yourself. Or, you know, whatever, you know, Facebook advertising and so on and whatever. But but don't try and be everything to everybody or don't try and use every single platform out there and, nice. and don't try and take shortcuts. You know, sit down, decide on what, who your target market is, decide on on what does that look like? What is your t uh, product or service market uh, fit? What's the value proposition? What is the proper call to action? What's the message you're trying to get out there? And do, make sure you got all that stuff in place as you are deciding what the platform is and then do what you said, test. But have someone that, that's guiding you through the testing and, and giving you all the options in terms of testing and then saying, actually, that's a good result. It might not be the result you're expecting. You know, you're not going to maybe book a hundred new sales this week, but you know, getting a few connections and, and starting to build momentum is 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 probably the the way is the better way to do it because again, it's about building long term good customer relationships. Because also about churn. If someone buys too quickly from you, they end up canceling too quickly from you as well. Hmm. So you really also want good quality customers as well or clients. You want to connect with them. If you're doing hiring, I mean, it's just the same thing. You want to help clients, your clients, hire the right people that are going to add value to their businesses. I mean, I'm, I, I'm just sort of, thought I just try and summarize a bit on, on some of our discussion. Would you agree with with, with what, what I've said now? Absolutely right. And I would really highlight, you know, we most of the leads we get into social hire are really good leads for us because of the way we market ourselves and the topics we talk about it through our blogs and webinars and whatever generally people that come to us tend to be the kinds of businesses that we can help but equally you know each month i will get calls booked in from people where uh you know it, it's just obvious that we're not the best agency to help them because 
they're in a sector or they're trying to get outcomes from social media that you know we haven't served before we haven't achieved that before uh, and, and so we'll turn that business away because for me i know if i don't know how to get results for that business or how to get that particular outcome we might be able to do a decent job of that but it's going to take us many 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 months of figuring out how do you get those results for that kind of client whereas if they turn to an agency or a freelancer who's already got those kinds of results for that kind of business they could really accelerate the time frame in which they get those results and you know this is really relevant for all the small businesses out there that are trying to do their own social media or have just hired you know a recent university graduate because they all know about social media they all use it all day long uh, you know, or is asking the office manager to try and free up a bit of time each week to take care of their social media. The, the problem with that is you're starting from a point where you don't know how to get results and therefore you're having to lose months and months of time and, and money to try and get to the point where you do know what works. And so one of the biggest wins you can get from social media is to find someone who has already achieved what you're trying to achieve in your business. And then, you know, whether you employ them, whether you outsource to them, whether you, you know, take them for lunch, whatever it is you do, tap into that knowledge so that you accelerate the pace at which, you know, at which you get results. Um, if, if you take one thing away from today's call, uh, I, I would say, let it be that, because if we as an, you know, a 10 year old, 11 year old social media agency, don't feel confident we can get results for a, a type of business we haven't worked for before. And we've got a, a big team of people that are specialists in loads of the different platforms and loads of the different approaches. You know, what chances there of someone in your business who's, who's not got those results, figuring that all out for themselves? It, it's just gonna take forever. And probably you're gonna give up on social media before you ever get to the point that it's worked. And waste a lot of time and money and, and, and which you could have rather spent um, elsewhere. Tony, um, we, we've come to the end of the hour and it's, it's happened so quickly and, and I've thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. And you, you, you really helped, um, I think, a lot of people within, within the, the community and better understand social media. And I think what I'd like to ask you now is sort of tell us a bit about your company. How can people get hold of you and, and sort of, sort of and why and you know what why are you as opposed to everyone else but really if they want to get hold of you how do they do that so uh, if you go to social-hire.com uh, you will see on the home page the option to book in a call with us uh, and that is just you know there's no cost to that you can chat through with us uh, what it would be like to work with us what kind of results we think we could get for you um, so so we can figure out together you know is this going to make sense for your business uh, and, and what kind of timescales can things be achieved in. Uh, in terms of us as a business, so we work with mostly small businesses, uh, B2B businesses. Um, so usually our clients will come to us and they'll have a really defined audience of who their company needs to reach and you know, ultimately convert into customers or hires uh, in order that social media will have uh, you know, produced a great return for them. So if you're in a professional services business, you know, maybe a consulting firm, a recruitment business, you're serving other businesses with, with a service of some sort, uh, then it's highly likely we would be able to help uh, and, and also just give you a feel for what can be achieved uh, in your business. Um, in terms of timescales, we have clients initially, uh, well, the only thing that they're agreeing to initially is to work with us for 90 days. And beyond that, it's then just a rolling monthly subscription. Um, now, we've got clients that have been with us for over 10 years. And, you know, average clients have been with us for over a year and a half. And they've all been able to leave after 90 days. So, uh, you know, that should speak volumes about the kind of results you can get once you've found the right partner and, and it's all, uh, you know, predictable and happening uh, exactly as you were, you were hoping. Uh, but I, I stress that because if you get the right person or the right agency in place, that, that's the kind of timescale in which you should be able to go from not getting any meaningful results on social media to 
actually, we're now hosting an event that's got loads of our ideal clients coming to it. Or we've now got loads of Zoom calls for our sales team. Or we've got loads of people that we're arranging demos with, or you know, whatever it is your business needs to achieve. So that's the kind of time scale it's achievable in. Um, if you'd like to chat through, you know, your business, your particular market, uh, and whether we think it's realistic or not to 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 get those kinds of results for you, um, yeah, just book in for a call via the site or uh, drop me a connection request on LinkedIn. Um, make sure you put a note with that to to say you've seen me on this call. Um, and uh, and then I'll, I'll make space uh, and get connected up. Tony, that's fantastic, and and I think I think that that speaks volumes to me. Is is um, the, you know that some of the people that that I've I've come across in in time, you know, they talk about you know it's all about impressions and likes and all that kind of thing. And and where you different for me is and and this is this is highlighted. And I thought I just before we sort of close off is. That within 90 days, you are able to produce some form of results for that particular client. And it's not, it's not sort of wishful thinking. It's not sort of pie in the sky. It is within 90 days, we're going to produce a result that we sit down and agree we're going to uh, uh, sort of arrange for you. So, and I love that. I thought that's what really, truly differentiates you from everyone else and and from a lot of agencies and that out there, but also your ability to turn clients away, but but also you know the the ability to really understand your market, the platforms and so on. Tony, thank you very much. Any any final sort of uh, parting words before I before I uh, say goodbye to the audience? Only I would love you all to go away enthused about what social media could achieve for your business. Um, a lot of you will have tried and experimented with social media and perhaps had disappointing results. Um, I hope today's call has helped you realize that that may well be just a function of what you were doing, not being the right things. Uh, and that for most of you on this call, uh, you know, it's highly likely that social media could be a big contributor to, to your growth and your success. Love it. Thank you, Tony. We'll definitely um, invite you back for another episode at some stage in the future if, you, if you're open and willing. Thank you very much for your time. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to say goodbye to the audience and then, um, um, and then um, yeah, thank you again. And, uh, and, but we'll be in touch. Uh, I'm sure there's a few clients that I can pass your way as well. So we, we must have a separate conversation about that. But thanks again, thank Tony. You. Have a super thank you, everyone. We'll catch up with you again. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us uh, today on another episode of uh, Marketing Leadership, where we speak to those really, I think, fundamentally differently uh, sort of formulated people with different offerings, people that, that are not just fly by night, that don't just take fat chances in terms of marketing. There's a lot of gumph and garbage out there. I think what uh, one of the big takeaways for me is uh, things like testing and things like that. But one of the big takeaways for me is find the right expert, do your homework, make sure you're speaking to the right people and get the right advice for the correct platform out there. Um, there's so many really very good things we could have covered and we only really had an hour, but um, I'm sure we could carry on all day with, uh, with Tony and, and we'd probably keep churning out the golden nuggets and and thank you very much for that thank you tony for joining us thank you everyone for joining us again and join us in the next episode of of um, marketing leadership the fractional cmo show where we talk about marketing and, and the true skills in the background of marketing if you're watching this on youtube or any one of the other channels please like and subscribe and uh, we'll 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 speak to you again uh, and all the best and have a super week further. Hi everybody, this is Dudley again and if you need help with a future or existing post-merge integration, I want to invite you to arrange a free no obligation meeting with us. During the meeting, we'll find out exactly what you need, what your challenges are and we'll explain how our unique PMI slipstream method can help you. Simply call us or visit mergerintegration.co.uk that's mergerintegration.co.uk or come to our website skillfulpursuit.com.